Ruth Asawa first caught my eye with her biomorphic wire sculptures at the August release of her 2020 U.S. postage stamps. I didn't know who she was or what her story entailed, but I loved her forms for their postmodern appearance and purchased several sheets of the stamps. After researching her life's work and experiences that inspired her, I'm even more endeared to her work. I want to share about some biographical information because I believe it's relevant to what inspired her work and allowed her extraordinary opportunities to learn during very formative years of her life. Ruth was born in Norwalk, California in 1926 to Japanese immigrants who were truck farmers due to discriminatory laws against the Japanese. Her parents were not allowed to become American citizens or own land. On the farm, Ruth was often given solitary chores because she was argumentative, but she loved working alone because it allowed her hours of daydreaming. Later in life, she realized that one of her farm tasks greatly influenced her work. She said, I used to sit on the back of the horse-drawn leveler with my bare feet, drawing forms in the sand, which later in life became the bulk of my sculptures. Ruth's father was arrested by the FBI in February of 1942, and Ruth would not see him again until 1948. Ruth's mother, Ruth, and her five siblings are interned at Santa Anita Racetrack, where for six months they lived in horse stables. But also during this time, she no longer had farm work to do, so she spent her time in the internment camps drawing with other Japanese interns who had been experienced Disney studio artists. She had the opportunity to be trained for seven hours a day drawing, which she attributes the internment camps as an opportunity to learn and grow her artistic talents. She eventually graduates from high school in the camp, and a kind teacher got her a scholarship at Milwaukee State Teachers College in Wisconsin in 1946. But sadly, she could never graduate because no one gave her the opportunity to do her student teaching because of the hostility against the Japanese. At the encouragement from friends, she traveled to an experimental college in North Carolina, the Black Mountain College, where she spent the summer studying art she earned a scholarship for three more years. She studies under the painter Joseph Albers, dancer Merce Cunningham, and architect inventor Buckminster Fuller, where she was profoundly influenced. In 1947, she went to Mexico to study Spanish and Mexican art with Joseph Albers, and she learns a basket weaving technique. She then began her career during the 1950s making paintings and drawings that eventually evolved into sculpture. It was after her travel to Mexico that she began to experiment with the line using wire, a common material. I quote her, I was interested in the ec economy of a line, making something in space, enclosing it without blocking it out. It's still transparent. I realized that if I was going to make these forms which interlock and interweave, it can only be one with a line because a line can go anywhere. Close quote. Viewers began to see all the transparencies in her work with the negative space in her wire designs that came from the basket weaving she learned in Mexico. What made her work stand out was how she interpreted a three-dimensional form from the images of her drawings. She was also inspired by nature. She once said, My curiosity was aroused by the idea of giving structural form to the images in my drawings. These forms come from observing plants, the spiral shell of a snail, seeing light through insect wings, watching spiders repair their webs in the early morning, and seeing the sun through the droplets of water suspended from the tips of pine needles while watering my garden, close quote. Nature and culture are woven together in her work. One experimentation at Black Mountain College during a dance class with Merce Cunningham, she came up with the notorious big bulbous shapes of her extraordinary knit wire filigree baskets. She also meets architecture student and her future husband, Albert Lanier. She marries Albert in 1950 as an interracial couple. They moved to San Francisco. She was heavily discriminated against when it came time to find work and established a family, but she refused to look at her racial status as a reason to be a victim. It only gave her a reason to work harder. At one point, her modern sculptures were considered a craft rather than fine art, 
because it was made of simple wire and it hung. During an interview, she expressed her belief that it was because of that discrimination during her teacher training that she even had the opportunity to attend Black Mountain College and learn how to be modern and experiment. Contrary to the advice from a longtime friend from the college to not make babies, only sculptures, she had six children in nine years. It was her husband and children that were the motivating fuel behind her work. She did not separate her family life from her art making. It was said by curator Helen Mull's work, Asawa didn't go to the studio to make her work and then raise her children somewhere else. There was just this merger of an art into her life, close quote. She often had her children coil the wire for her and help her in her making process. Black Mountain College taught collaboration among teachers and students, and her family continued to foster the master collaborator inside her. Her training at Black Mountain College also became the foundation for her first children's art program where she organized curriculum for the San Francisco Public Schools and later the Alvarado Arts Workshop using the same problem-solving skills that taught individuals to be curious and cogent human beings. She once said, a child can learn something about color, about design, and about observing objects in nature. If you do that, you grow into a greater awareness of things around you. Art will make people better, more highly skilled in thinking and improving whatever, whatever business one goes into or whatever occupation. It makes a person broader. She began competing for public commissions in 1966, first with the Ghirardelli Square Andrea. Many people wonder how she went from the very modern formations of her wire sculpture to the relief sculptures of her public commissions. She learned to be a master collaborator from Black Mountain College, and she involved many hands from the community to add to her work, just as she did while implementing her public school art programs. The most personal public commission work was the 1994 Japanese Memorial in San Jose that depicts the Japanese-American experience from the struggles of being an immigrant during World War II. Rather than write a biography of herself, she made a visual biography of her life through this bronze relief. In 2002, she completes her final public commission, the Garden of Re Remembrance at San Francisco State University. Working with two landscape artists, Ruth has 10 boulders placed in the garden that represent the 10 camps where Japanese Americans were interned. But during the sunset years of her life, it is the children she continues to think about most and remained an art activist. So they always have art to be a part of their lives. It was what enabled her to have a strong voice throughout her life despite the discrimination she experienced. In 2006, her past work begins as a resurge and the Fine Arts Museum of San Francisco presents her a major retrospective of her work entitled Contours in the Air. In addition to her work put on permanent displays in the de Young Museum building in Golden Gate Park. Ruth passes away in 2013. And here are a list of my sources.